Hello, Crystal Palace. Welcome to the Up and Allwood Library Hub Live Lunch. This is intended as a positive break from work, from the current situation, um, and a way of spreading some positive news uh, and maybe some ways in which you can get involved and help the local community. So our guest today is Chris Neath, who is the manager of the Up and Allwood Library Hub and also a local resident and a musician. Um, Chris, it's great to have you here. Um, can you tell us a bit about um, the Library Hub and how it actually came into being? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, so the, the, the story of the Up and Allwood Library Hub, some people will know and some people probably won't know, you know, where we came from and, and why we're all here. Um, but the, the short story is that the it's a community asset that is grown out of the community coming together. Um, so back in 2011, 2012, uh, the community got together and campaigned to make sure that the library stayed open because it was under threat of closure at the time. Um, and there were a really passionate group of local people who just wanted to make sure that there still was a library in Crystal Palace and how important that was. Um, and so in, in 2012, um, the trust was formed and in, uh, four years later in 2016, we took over the ownership of the building, um, agreed for some refurbishment works to get it into a really nice vibrant space that it is now, um, which meant that we had some big spaces upstairs and around the building that we could use for activities and events and, and all sorts that we've been uh, programming and, and working on over the last few years. Um, and Margaret and Emily, who are our uh, co-directors, have been on board since then, um, back in 2016, and have been driving lots of the projects going forward and, and fundraising and doing whatever we can to make sure that it's a really successful community space. Um, and our, our, our main aim has always been to ensure that there is that lending library still exists there, that we've got library staff who um, yeah, can do all the things that uh, ask all the questions, answer it all the uh, the library queries that come in um but at the same time we've gone ahead with all sorts of different strands and thoughts and ideas that the community have come up with that staff have come up with and really wanted to take forward um and we've pushed up to i think just before uh having to close we had around 38 regular activities going on um and a lot of those are local people hiring space doing things in collaboration with us um, we do lots of stuff in partnership with people and some of those are uh, funded projects and, and some are just ideas that have uh, started as a, a small thought. People have just walked in and seen the space and had a chat with us and then we've grown it into something um, a bit bigger over time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that's the sort of quick background of who we are and, and why we're there. Um, and I think we we really have always wanted to engage with what people locally want to do with the space and ideas that people have so it's great that people you know come into the space and say look it's in this big hall upstairs what can we do with it and th there's definitely been a lot of change i mean even in just the last year um we um i run palace acapella choir as a lot of you probably know and um the upper nord library hub is our venue and we absolutely love it but just in the year that we've been operating we've seen a huge amount of change there just in um, both in terms of the number of events you've got on and the number of groups using it and also cosmetically there's been some massive changes so tell us about what's going on with those yeah we've so as i said we refurbished um uh, a few years ago just before we reopened uh, which was an icon uh so we managed to craft out these spaces that didn't really exist before in the building uh to use specifically for well all sorts of things but events and activities and, and just getting people in and doing stuff uh, and then we've uh, sort of developed that over the last few years as well and if anyone had been in more recently uh, we've made some changes to the front space as well um, and and reintegrated a community cafe um, and we had a really really great amount of support from Grimshaw Architects who came in and designed uh, sort of pegboards and painting the whole thing green and we had a big 15 hour day on a Sunday I think painting walls and ceilings and, and putting in lights and all sorts uh, so we've really tried to develop the space and make it work um, as best as we can over the last 
year or so, we've done quite a bit on that. Um, and there, there's lots of little changes that we've put in. Um, the Library of Things has developed over time as well. So again, you can more recently, you would have seen that lit up uh, in that front space. Um, the, the community cafe is also a community bar in the evenings. So we have this, as soon as you walk in, you can get a coffee in the day and come in in the evening and have a beer instead. Um, and we, we've done bits and pieces upstairs as well. So the, as we've developed some of the events that we put on and sort of bigger things, and um, the more and more we cater for private events and parties and people coming in to launch a product or anything like that, then there's a nice lit space for that sort of thing. Um, a couple of the other things that we've been doing recently. So, so two, two years ago now, or three years ago this summer, we had the Attic Arts Club come in for the first time. So they had a bit of a vision for how they wanted it to look and we worked together to make it into quite a nice theatre space and putting up lighting. And we've still got the stained glass effect on the, on the windows at the back so you can see through the study area. Was so nice little touches like that. Was that from the Sorry? Attic and the stained glass was that from left over from the attic arts then yeah yeah so we kept it in <laughs> because it just is a nice yeah we, we, i mean i did have someone in to come and have a look at the room before and say how nice the stained glass was before we realized it was it is a temporary thing <laughs> there's lots of nice little touches of stained glass around the building that are authentic from um back in yesteryear uh that just kept in and there's a really nice skylight right in the middle of the venue space upstairs and, and things like that so they developed the idea and, and brought in some more temporary fixtures um and we've got we do have a bar upstairs as well now uh which i have a is, feeling that you actually built that am i right there's we have a couple of bars uh, one i did build uh, i say that loosely because it was guided by um a friend of mine sean who is way more technically technically able than I am but it was good fun building even though it took 12 hours overnight <laughs> but we got there dedication Chris <laughs> yeah well you know you get your head into a project and you have to finish it <laughs> um but yeah yeah we've had lots of little little changes to the space and just evolved it over time mm -hmm. and made it work for the types of events that were putting on and what people wanted and we're always serving and speaking to people in the community to say look is this something it's useful is it something you want um and i think the, the footfall and the use of the space and how it's used and uh, how the bar is used in the cafe has shown that you know it's something that people want and use it's definitely we've increased footfall over the last couple of years pretty much consistently um so yeah it'd be great to get back to that yeah so that leads us quite nicely on to um, obviously, with the lockdown, the venue is not currently being used in its normal way, um, but there's a huge amount going on um, still. So tell us what the hub is doing during the lockdown. Yeah, so uh, we've mainly tried to develop as much as we can that has been offline, online. So things like this, um, Rin has been responsible and done fantastic work on putting as much as we can online and was really quick off the mark. Uh, speaking to hirers and getting everyone involved. And since then, um, you know, we've had lots of people from the community offer time to come in and do storytelling and things on language. And we've got yoga sessions and mindfulness and storytelling and music, live music, recording music, all sorts going on online. Um, and the idea is just to keep engaged with the community and entertain people where we can and inform and educate just in the same way as you would. Um, you know if we were operating normally in the building mm. so although the building isn't used at the moment um there's a lot that we can do virtually uh, and a couple of our real regular sessions that we have had for the whole time that i've been there at the hub um have been the esol and the digital lounge program and uh, so the the esol um we have two fantastic volunteer tutors um Wendy and Robert and uh, Simon has recently been helping Robert out with classes as well. So as a group of three, they're, um, they're doing virtual sessions at the moment. So mm -hmm. one-on-ones and groups. That's the English classes, isn't it? Yeah, so it's um, English speakers of other languages. Uh, so we do a, a basic beginner's session and a more intermediate session. So it can be, um, we, it, we had really, really good take up and we always have for the programme. 
So it could be people with absolutely no English at all that can come into a setting, um, a bit like a classroom setting, but very informal. And it's all about confidence building and getting people talking. And then where people have specific issues and things they want to work on or just practice or look at grammar, then there's ability to do that as well. So they've been um, they've been great in getting people up to speed on the technology, which everyone um, facing or has faced over the last month or so is understanding what Zoom is and how it works. Uh, and uh, yeah, setting up sessions with people, uh, just maybe even having a conversation for half an hour, 40 minutes, so they can practice the English that maybe they're not able to do at the moment because everyone, um, obviously there's so much social distancing and everyone's stuck inside the the practice that they've been able to put in place before by coming into the library and going into a coffee shop and the supermarket and just chat with people. Um, they're now being able to do in a virtual space. Mm -hmm. And similarly with the, the digital lounge program, Casper was um, straight on with that and uh, got, in, got in contact with all of the regulars um, that he has sessions with and set them up on, on online uh, web chats like this and um, even remote accessing people's computers so you could help with them um, setting up the basics and running through how to use this this and that and the other and then they've been doing sessions that sometimes are just activities and games uh, sometimes it's just literally a chat so they can have a conversation um, a lot of the the people that tend to come to the classes uh, particularly to some of the main sessions are seniors who uh, may have been really locked down during this period um, possibly living alone and it's nice to try and break that isolation by having a good nine ten people join a group conversation and run through how to get your shopping order in yeah absolutely and that that's clear community web isn't it if people uh, who are watching know anybody who might need some help absolutely so for any of the things on here you can go on to our website or any of the social media channels um, if anyone has any questions at any point about any of it, you can email us at info at unlp.org or just head to the website, which is up on the library hub .org. Cool. Um, you say you've made it very clear that community is the absolute central point of the up on the library hub. Um, and that's certainly been my experience in uh, as a hirer. Um, I think there's you mentioned uh, yesterday a couple of projects that the general public probably actually don't necessarily know about, which are really community-based. Can you tell us yeah. about those? Yeah, so uh, we've always been, um, as I said before, when Margaret and Emily first came on board and were fundraising, um, we've always had a drive to uh, set up projects and, uh, and, and offer things at the Library Hub um, above and beyond what you may get in a normal community space or a normal library. Um, so there's been all sorts of projects which we've been involved in over the years um, and a couple that we've been doing um, pretty much consistently, consistently and definitely ongoing um, more recently. Uh, one is the Big Energy Saving Network, which um, a few people will have heard of, a few people we may have helped over the last few months. Um, and that's a, a funded project funded by the Citizens Advice Bureau. Um, we've run it. Um, I think for four years now in a row, and it runs over winter. So it actually has just come to the end um, of the project to the end of March. And for that, we um, we engage with uh, over 300 consumers, and this is absolutely anyone. Uh, we particularly want to try and help vulnerable people, um, but it really is open to absolutely anyone who has issues with um, high utility bills or they're unsure about how to switch. They want advice on um, energy saving measures at home and top tips and things that you can do to save money and uh, the primary focus is just to make sure that people keep the home warm as well and can afford that. Um, so yeah as I said we've just come to the end of that project and it's been a really successful year. Um, I, I didn't have a figure for the total amount that we saved people but we did save one individual over a thousand pounds on his bills which is not a small amount. Um, and it and it, and it's a, a much bigger amount than that over the 300 odd consumers. Um, so it's been a really f a fantastic project, and so we hope to do it again uh, next year as well. Um, it's something that we we're always keeping an eye on, um, and it's definitely uh, it's open to people wherever. But it's a real focus project on local people, and um, 
yeah, helping people to save money and just having the education and knowledge of how you can switch and save and look after those things yourself as well in the future. Um, so that's one project that maybe more people know about, um, depending on how involved you've been or how much time you come into the hub and speak to us. Um, one of the other projects that should be in its third year, um, well, it is in its third year now, it should be starting uh, this month. So we should be running sessions, unfortunately, not agency. Um, and that's uh, our Wonder Wheels cycling program. Uh, so that is, um, we're working in partnership with uh, Women's Refuge which is Bromley and Croydon Women's Aid. And the project is aimed at getting people cycling, uh, showing them, sort of educating them on training and we do maintenance sessions and we do lead rides. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, it's very much um, about the social side of things as well and the mental health um, as well as physical well-being. And so we work with the women and children from the, the um, from from recording women's aid and we set up sessions in Crystal Palace Park. Um, so we would have had one this weekend. We were going to be running some over Easter uh, to get started and it sort of runs over the nicer months during the year. So it's, uh, it's definitely a summer thing. Um, and, that, and that's been fantastic. It's, uh, we've had about 150 people over the previous two years uh, joining it. And it, it's brilliant. It's one of the, the best things that I get involved in here, I think. Um, and it's really valuable to them just to have that time to spend with their children and speak to the other mums and really get out and about and learn something new. Um, and you, you do find that um, some of the, particularly the children are the ones that get the mums coming along and then the mums get really involved after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we've, uh, part of the funding we originally had for that was to get a fleet of bikes. So we've got e-bikes and children's bikes and adult bikes that we maintain um so it, they can bring nothing along just come and join we've got helmets and bikes and we just uh yeah get started and some of the people we've had come along to gone from absolutely being terrified of cycling or never having done it before have then gone away you know really pleased with how much they've achieved and then borrowing the bikes off of us at the weekend to go riding with the kids so yeah it's been a really really great project brilliant brilliant project um, fingers crossed the lockdown ends in time for you to uh, do some of that this summer then. Um, what 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 might happen after the lockdown? What are the, uh, I guess, vague plans at the moment? Because we don't know how long it will last. Yeah, so it obviously is very unsure exactly what's going to happen. But um, the, the way we see it, we've like I said, we've got these projects that are running. So we, I, I really want to make sure that that still happens and we'll work it into a format where we can deliver it, even if it ends up being uh, riding in the rain later in autumn, winter, I don't know, we'll make it happen. Um, and there's ways of, you know, there's ways of getting around it. We might have to do a little bit more on the maintenance side of things this year, who knows? Um, and, and yeah, and other than that, we definitely want to, um, as soon as we can get restarted safely in the, and um, put all the uh, provisions in to make sure that the space is used um, safely and properly, Mm -hmm. then we we, we want to revitalize all the events and the space hire and all of our regular hires are, are doing all these things at the moment to try and um, keep people engaged and like I said they're doing a lot of online content for this at the moment so just getting that back into the physical realm um, and getting the, the building vibrant again and giving people um, because it, it is really really important I think libraries and community spaces to um, to have a place that you can go and feel safe and have access to education and health and well-being and activities and the social side of things mm. is essential. So we definitely want to um, you know, get that started as soon as we're able to properly. Mm -hmm. um, the online things that we were doing as well, I think, um, have worked fantastically. And I'm sure that the um the sort of the lay of the land after this is people will maybe feel although desperate probably to socialize in person again that they've seen the benefit of what can be achieved online as well um so i think there's some potential for um this sort of online engagement with people um, and ways that we can spread the word and get people involved in things um where otherwise they're maybe not able to absolutely 
I think um, I've found very similar thing that one of the massive positives of this, although the situation is awful, but one of the massive positives is that we're all exploring online and finding exactly that. We've had people joining mm. our fire sessions from actually all over the world, which is amazing, or, you know, North London, where they, they wouldn't actually come to the, um, the physical choir session, um, but they're joining the online one, and we're sort of, we, we've already had a similar thought that it would be lovely to carry on with some of the online choir sessions exactly because you can reach a whole different load of people. Um, so I think that's really exciting. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, actually, uh, one of the things that I was thinking about this week is how a lot of the um, content that is going out on the Up and Norwood Library Hub, or some of it anyway, is actually um, provided by library staff because you and Rin are both musicians and um, Emily is an actor, I believe. And you've got a lot of staff who are performing arts based. Um, and I mean, certainly from my point of view, I found that a really massively beneficial thing. How do you guys find that feeds into the work you're doing at the Hub? Yeah, I think, um having staff that uh, have all this experience and are passionate about what they do is fantastic and it shows you i mean with rin is our absolute tech guru uh so as well as playing the music she's uh, fantastic at arranging the technical side of things as well so being able to do um get straight off the mark and do all the things that have been put up online is down to rin's experience and ability uh, and hopeful, hopefully passion <laughs> as well. Uh, so it's uh, it's fantastic to have um, you know people in the team that really feel strongly about um, the things that they enjoy, and maybe professionally or personally, or just as hobbies that they can then bring into an environment which can help it flourish. Mm -hmm. um, so we, like that you said, um, Emily's uh, drama background; she's put on um, a drama classes before. Mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for children and they've done um, sessions and then doing plays, uh, mm -hmm. which we have recorded, so maybe we can get that out at some point. Um, <laughs> which is fantastic. And it's, um, it, yeah, it's a really nice way to go. Um, I think a lot of it is just saying, how can we support back to the hub as well and say, mm -hmm. this is what I enjoy doing anyway, so let's come and do it and see mm -hmm. if it's something that's valuable to people. Um, and uh, Rin and I started uh, the open mic night and, and we did band nights and things. So we've always pushed the fact that music is something we really, really enjoy. So how can we bring it in and help that support the, li the library hub as well? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, we've worked with so many people anyway, even if they're not um, you know, directly part of the core team, the event staff, then um, people we've partnerships with. Um, the Attica Arts Club came out of um, just a small chat and uh, Norman's been part of the team working on events and things as well. So um, all the, it's really valuable to have people um, who are highly experienced in these specific fields who can come in and hopefully answer questions a lot easier and get things set up um, because it's something that they've done before. And also I think we found that um, you guys are amazing at facilitating stuff. Um, and I'm sure part of that is because there's a lot that you understand without us having to explain it. So, you know, when I've come to any of you with an idea or a question or something, the attitude is always, yes, we can do this. Let's work out how. Um, and I don't I don't have to explain or fight for something that I need because you guys just you understand why it's important. And I find that incredibly valuable. So um, personally, for me, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's lovely to hear. <laughs> Um, so I guess the most important thing right now is um, how can the local community get involved and um, be part of the hub during the lockdown and how can we support the hub so that we have a venue to come back to after the lockdown? Yeah, so I, I think there's a number of ways. Um, there's certainly uh, just getting involved in what we are able to run at the moment. So um, trying new things. What, watching some of the videos, learning something new, getting involved in conversations, um, get in touch with us because we're so keen to have um, the community engaged with what they want to see and do. So if you have just ideas that um, you have where you want to, um, you think it'd be great to have, you know, this, that or the other, um, no ideas spring to mind. <laughs> but, you know, whatever you think would be a lovely thing uh, that 
people would enjoy to see and get involved in. Um, or if there's ideas of things that you like to yourself, if you have a particular um, passion or skill or experience or something that you'd like to share with people that we could work into um, what we are able to offer at the moment, then fantastic. Um, as I, I talked about before with things like the ESO and the digital lounge programs, um, we just want to engage with as many people as we can. So if there are people that you feel would benefit from those sorts of services, if there are people that are um, keen to improve their English, then we've got the, the ESOL program there. If there's people that you think are maybe vulnerable and unable to access certain things because of barriers to um, their computer skills and things like that, then we've got the digital lounge. So just spreading the word about what we're doing and getting involved where you can is massively valuable. Um, we're also, obviously we're completely shut at the moment and we cannot bring any money in through the um, events and things like that that we do. So um, a big part of where we bring in the money to keep the doors open and keep the lights on um, before now was through hiring out space and putting on events and relying on people coming through the door um, and uh, driving income that way. So if anyone is able to afford then you can donate to us um, and there's text links and you can go to our local giving page and set up a regular donation uh, if you're able to afford it. And we completely appreciate at this time that it is financially scary for a lot of people as well. Um, so bearing that in mind, there's also other ways you can get involved. Uh, we've always had a really strong volunteer network. Uh, we've got a great bunch of volunteers. Um, talked about them already some of them like our, our volunteers who, who are running some of the programs um, all on their own time. Uh, we have a really great group of host volunteers who um, uh, come in and host the space and do absolutely everything. They do the washing up, they speak to people, they promote things we've got going on, they help out with the library things, absolutely everything just to keep us running. Um, and obviously we're desperate to get that back up and running as soon as we open as well. Um, and, and invite and engage in volunteers in person. But if, um, if, if anyone out there wants to get in touch about volunteering, then we're so keen, we're always looking for volunteers. And it could be a whole massive range of things. We've got admin volunteers, we've got volunteers who come in and do bits of gardening. Um, the cycling project I spoke about, I'm always desperate for volunteers. So you don't have to be a cycling expert, you don't have to have any experience, but I'm always after a volunteer for that. So when we do get it restarted, um, you know, I, I'm desperate for a volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's loads of ways you get involved. And when it, whenever I speak to volunteers, when they first come in for a chat, um, I always ask, what, what do you want to do? What are you interested in? Um, and then we always try and aim for that. And volunteers come up with things that they want to do. Um, so like, like Jeff, one of our host volunteers, who I'm hoping is watching, he, um, he's a, a chef. Uh, guru uh, and he goes into schools and does chess sessions with, um, yeah. with school children uh, uh, which I know he loves so he started um, doing a couple of chess sessions at the hub as well which I'd love to get going again um, and things like that and you just go great I'm a volunteer and I want to support here's something that I can come and bring and, and put on at the library hub um, so all, all sorts of ways that people can get involved um, uh, and, and one other thing to mention is you can become a supporter of the hub and it can be a really small amount but we do have a supporter scheme uh, you can find that through our website um, and you can join up and be um, a, a supporter of the hub and it's so valuable and it really really does help us and it means that the you know the library can be there in the future and we keep the once we reopen keep the doors uh, open and the lights on and keep everything running Brilliant. And actually, there's one thing that I might just add to that, because I saw Rin posted about it yesterday, which is that I know you guys are currently doing a whole load of funding applications and things. And um, there's a call out for positive comments um, and supportive uh, things that we can quote in uh, funding applications. So anybody who's watching, if you're making use of the um, all the, the live streaming that the hub is doing and you could just send us a comment that we can add to funding applications that would be hugely appreciated as well so i think at this point i'm going to hand over to rin briefly uh, my co-host just to uh, let us give us an update on the live streaming 
Erin, have you got anything to add for us today? Uh, hold on one second. Oh, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. Um, today I think we're just we've got I've got um. I I did have my program in front of me, and then I went and got that supporter scheme website, and now it's all it's all <laughs> way not in front of me anymore. Uh, yeah. So straight after this, we have Alice doing a cross stitch. So the, here's a really good example of how somebody in the community just has a hobby and is going to live stream it. So she will be on pretty much straight after this, if not just before we finish. Um, we've got yoga with Maya later on, and then at four we've got the wrap with Adam, and that's a, a new s a new series where he is um, reviewing films and such like. And then tonight, um, and then at later on, I think it's at five. What time is it? It is at five. We have an audience with Alex and the Wonderland. We have moved our musical um, musical stuff for the weekend onto Friday because um, Crystal Palace lockdown live. We're doing such a good job on a Saturday. We're, we just we just don't need to compete. We don't need to compete. We can't <laughs> compete. We got completely overrun by the how amazing all that work was. So we're just going to give up our Saturdays to them. So we're going to uh, watch party as much as we can onto our page, but um, you have to be in their group for that. Um, and then later on this evening, we also have uh, covers with Imran. So if you ask him for a cover, he will attempt to play it. Sometimes he says, no, I don't know it at all. But most of the time he does give them a good go and it's a good laugh. Um, and that's our Friday. Oh, sorry. At 10 o'clock, we also have Gothic Stories with Amy, who is reading fairy tales for adults, which is uh, very nice. And in Victorian Gothic costume, I seem to remember. Uh, yeah, she does get dressed up a fair amount. Uh, she's a very theatrical lady. She's cabaret. She's a cabaret performer. Um, so, yeah, we're very lucky to have her. Yay. Awesome. Um, and I'm going to add one more thing to that, which is that um, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. we have um, Crib Note singing session. Um, which we're working towards uh, creating a great big choir recording. So obviously at the moment we can't all actually sing together, but what we can do is learn the same song, record it separately and then put it together into a choir track. So um, you don't have to be part of the recording, uh, come along and join in the singing anyway, um, but we would love to have as many people as possible take part in the recording. Um, and all the videos from previous sessions are online. So if you want to kind of catch up and stuff, um, that's totally doable. Um, and then final thing is just to say that um, we're always looking for more people to come and talk to us on this, um, the library live lunch. So if you have something, um, positive stories you want to spread or things that are happening in the community that you want to tell us about, we'd love to have you come and actually um, talk to us about it on the show. So please get in touch um, with us and organize it. So um, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. It's brilliant to have a chat with you. Um, thank you for having me. We will see you uh, next week. So have a good weekend, everybody. Bye.